G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Just as patch day is about to roll around the corner, I have to put out another video on the F4C. This plane is a plane for alpha males, and alpha males only. If you are not the most chad of chad people ever, you must step away from this plane right now, because it is not for the faint of heart. It is an absolute pain in the ass to play. <laughs> it is ridiculously painful to play. This plane is... Well, it used to be good. It used to be very good, in fact. It used to be the best plane in the game at one point, and then along came the MiG-21 SMT, MF, and then of course later on the F-4E to absolutely supersede it, and now we have the MiG-21 BIS, the J-35D, and the Mirage 3C to bash its head in a little bit further. So, now it sits at 10.3 and is basically a suffer bus. <laughs> Seriously though, if you're feeling like just not giving a crap at all, this plane is a lot of fun to fly when you get the right situations. All three of these matches will be basically hard down, <laughs> hard down tiers. This is how bad this plane is. I can't actually get good footage in a full up tier, but this is just the way that the cookie crumbles with this plane. It is not competitive, but I'll tell you what, when you get in the sort of gist of things, you can actually have a decent amount of fun. Of course, I wouldn't be expecting a whole lot from this thing, as it only has AIM-9Es, and the AIM-7Ds are... they're okay, but they require higher altitude to use them properly. Not only that, the radar is a little bit less sensitive, uh, sorry, it's a little bit more sensitive and it picks up a lot more ground clutter, um, and maybe even cloud cover as well. This plane does not have an excellent radar, and you do notice the difference between this and the F-4E's radar. It is night and day. But for this particular plane, you also get crappy performance doesn't turn as well it is a lot heavier than the f4e and you also have to strap a gun pod unless of course you're going to go full chad like i am here and going without the gun pod we're just going to go all missiles and of course this is going to obviously be a wise decision i think this is the match that we do there is definitely at least one match in here where i do go for all missiles um i don't think this is the one because i've read my read my stuff wrong and i can see the pod on the underside of the belly this thing does give a lot of drag and it does reduce your speed a lot further, which sucks. This plane has so many things bad with it, but you know what? We're going to have some fun anyway, because that's kind of what we like to do here. We like to turn negatives into a positive and get the ball rolling. So we see a victim here. Yes, they're a victim because they are going to be subjected to aim 7Ds. Oh, wait, never mind. Hang on. Is it going to track? Is it going to track? No, of course it's not going to track because it's too damn close to the ground. One thing with aim 7s is to get up to altitude. These particular missiles are probably the ones that are best for bomber formations, for example. But uh, if you can't find a bomber formation, a Shenyang F5 might just do the trick. Might not do the trick with the AIM-7s, but of course you have that Vulcan, and one of the benefits of it is it just has so much ammunition to its arsenal. And now I have a couple of other things added to my, uh, maybe not my arsenal, but certainly I am going to the beach and having a look at some seagulls. This particular MiG-19 might be interested and might be screaming mine, 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 all the way to the sails where it gets itself absolutely smacked and, uh, you know, stuck on some, on some sails. That's a Finding Nemo reference. If you haven't watched Finding Nemo, then I don't know what you are doing. Either that or you're about 12 years old. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be sort of now dominating the battlefield. It sounds stupid, but you are going to be dominating the battlefield because the same thing applies to the F4E as it does to the F4C. So, AIM-9E, despite it being painful and underpowered away, it's not going to strike. This thing could absolutely benefit from some AIM-9Gs, but you know what? It's stuck with AIM-9Es, so we're going to make the AIM-9Es work. MiG-19PT obviously doesn't see me, so I'm going to use that uh, really nice tracking circle to good use. Shenyang F5, though, maybe he does see me, but I don't manage to squeeze off the shots in time. Now, a Yak-38 is a very, very dangerous target, but Yak-38s are notoriously crap at low-speed handling. So what I can do is I can convince this Yak-38 to do some low-speed turning by doing a couple of clever little maneuvers, and notice how he is struggling to keep up with me. This is exactly why I hate the Yak-38, because it's a bus, but it's more of a bus than the F4C. And that really says something. Being a bus more than the F4C is, is just, it's just record breaking. Record breakingly painful. Now the AK-38 in this case has probably built up enough speed to dodge my AIM-9E. If it was an AIM-9G, again, he probably would not have gotten away. And his uh, little attempt there to uh, 
try and best me would have been more than thwarted. Now, speaking of thwarting, I have a MiG-21 behind me who is looking to thwart my fun with this Yak-38. There's an F-104 toying with him, but of course, because the Yak-38 has had to turn a little bit, there is not much that he can do. I'm going to go for a little bit of a quick burst instead of using that AIM-9E, and of course, it is a very good decision. MiG-21 is a PFM, as you'll find out in a little bit, but the thing that is making me turn around is that SU-17. I don't want to be on the receiving end of an R-60. Now, it looks like he's shooting uh, the S-21s, but he turns around at the last second, and that gets him killed. He may have been going for the F-104, he may have just been avoiding me, and then I pull a little trick here. Now, the MiG-21 has excellent AOA, meaning that it can pull, but when it does pull, it bleeds all of its speed. So, if you do a 180 degree turn and can avoid the shots or missiles, you can just pull away from a MiG-21 like this without any problem, because you have those two, uh, I think they're G General Electric engines, I'm not really sure, those two big powerful engines, you can just absolutely pull away from a MiG-21 in a 90 degree turn like this, and because I have a friendly F-104, it is basically game over for this MiG-21, look how damn slow he is, to the point where an AIM-9E can very easily come and clean him up. That is an absolutely beautiful play, I absolutely love things like that, where you can pull off a kill like that, man it just makes you feel good on the inside. This particular plane is good when working in packs, and of course, <laughs> in a full down tier like this, it is pretty decent. But in a full up tier, you are going to be struggling, and you're going to be getting situations like that fewer and fewer, because that's just the way that, uh, unfortunately, top tier works. You don't have those flares, you don't have those higher level missiles, you don't have that maneuverability to make up for those lack of uh, critical critical infrastructure, if you will, those critical abilities. And that's one of the things that really lets the F4C down. You have plenty of good things that you can pull out, but you just don't have enough to sort of exist at 10.7. 10.3, you can do okay. You can keep up with things like the F1, the Lightning F6, the F104s, the MiG-19, very, very well, in fact. And this plane kind of sits well in that sort of era, but to more towards the top, of course. This is one of the issues that I've had all the time with battle rating compression. It just ruins planes like these, and while you can have a lot of fun by not giving a crap and just hoping for some derp, if you will, this is not really a great way to play your planes. I would love to have a competitive F4C, I would love to have a competitive F104, I would love to have a competitive, I don't know, name a plane that is stuck in that sort of battle rating compression lim limbo, and you can just think of any alternative and that would be battle rating decompression to alleviate the issues. So I have locked myself an aim at 7D on this F104, he's heading straight for me and I think he manages to dodge it just at the right time which is really sad because this is one of the, uh, this would be one of the, the nicer kills, getting those sort of missile jousts, but that's okay, J32B is up next, and I'm going to pull away a little bit, hopefully it engages in time, but unfortunately we're traveling too fast, our closure rate is too high, and unfortunately I can't get myself a kill, but we are in a little bit of a pickle. Just like last time, I have a couple of seagulls looking for my booty, and it is a Hunter FGA-9 and a G91YS. These planes, whilst not being particularly deadly, are quite fast, and of course, I need to use my speed to get away from them. They also have missiles, so I need to be paying a little bit of attention. The G91YS decides it is better to just piss off, and then I decide to go vertical with this Hunter. Now, I only decide to do that because I am 4.5 kilometers away, and by the time he gets a side lock, and with me turning the afterburners off, it's going to be way too close for the missile to even bother. But I've noticed the Hunter has decided to go into the vertical with me, and is going to hang more than enough in that vertical. He uh, kind of goes for the avoidance, thinking that I may have a gun pod, but this time I've gone without the gun and gone for a little bit of extra, I guess, performance. But it does it does cost me a lot, because this plane is not forgiving without a gun pod. Anyway, we're going to be moving on. We're just going to ignore the Hunter and continue to go in a straight line. We're going to look for teammates that might need a little bit of help and then give them a uh, little bit of relief via the AIM-9E. So AIM-9E, first up, first customer, looks like this MiG-21 and I'm going to throw it off at about three and a half kilometers or th more about three kilometers. 
looking about maybe two and a half there and I send it on its way but because the M9E has a pretty shit burn time and everyone's traveling pretty quick then there's not a whole lot that it can do to keep up with the MiG-21 plus it does a 90 degree turn at uh, that distance again I have basically wasted another missile here because everyone's traveling so fast and we're at sea level the missiles effective range in this situation is going to be a lot less this particular MiG-21, however, does not really see the uh, the missile, and the missile in this case does absolutely know where it is, and this particular G-91 does not know where it is. In fact, he doesn't know where he is, and he doesn't know where he isn't. So, AIM-9E sending his way, and it's going to connect beautifully. Getting these sort of kills that are distracted, or these enemies that are distracted, is going to be a ticket out in the F-4C. It's going to be the way that you get all of your kills, it's going to be the way you grind your upgrades, and of course, I think it's going to be the way that you're going to have the most fun. Speaking of fun, we are now down to our AIM-7Ds. Now, the AIM-7Ds do pull more. They're basically a... Think of a, a really fat AIM-9G. that uh, It can pull fairly decently, but only at higher altitudes, and of course, at those uh, ranges where it does have a bit more speed. Now, it does have a 1km warm-up time where it travels in a straight line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead it, and because we're traveling in a straight line against each other, we're not closing at point 0.8, I'm actually able to get a kill like that, which is hilarious. Now, going on for the next skill, what are we looking for? Maybe something nice and cheeky. Maybe the Shenyang F5 wants to deal with some fun, but it looks like there's a Harrier and a J32B that are going to be harassing the F100 here. So I think the biggest target here is going to be the Harrier. Just in case it's a GR1, I lead the missile and I send on the way the AIM-9 or the AIM-7D, which connects beautifully. Unfortunately for me, I roll straight into this AIM-9E, and that's basically the end of my run here. Funny that I mentioned that I didn't get any good games at top tier. That was a full up tier, but it was only four on the enemy team because of the uh, matchmaking situation. And honestly, you get matches like that, you can do stuff. But honestly, it is a tough game. It is very tough playing this plane. Finally, on to our next match. I don't think I've gone with any missile uh, with any guns. Once again, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go raw, and we're gonna go for the aim nine E kills. Looking at that uh, that kill there, looking back at it, I genuinely don't know how I got that kill. But you know what? I'm gonna take it. And take it, I will take this uh, MiG-19 as well. It looks like he's very fixated on the friendly F4C, and being a uh, fairly long distance shot, but being at uh, a lower altitude, the missile can actually pick up some speed on the way down, and therefore have a greater range. Think of that next time you fire your missiles, especially the AIM-9s and the R-60s. These are particular missiles that um, they don't use radar, and so you don't really need to worry about ground clutter. So I would suggest if you can fire from above, and for the AIM-7Ds, try and fire from below if you can, but not that far below where the ground clutter is going to pick up. If you are trying to avoid ground clutter, definitely go for the uh, the up angle. So try and aim up, and that will reduce the amount of ground clutter that the, uh, the radar picks up, and so you're more likely to get a better kill. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, moving on, we have three AIM-9s, and we've got a couple of AIM-7s as well. We're going to be looking at using the AIM-9s on perhaps the Jaguar, looking very fine there, but his closure rate is just too much. He's panning way too quickly across the uh, across the face of the plane, and so the missile will have to make a pretty sharp 90 degree turn, and therefore it would be unlikely that I get a kill. Likewise, the SU-17 here has just pulled way too far, and I've gotten myself a wasted missile very, very bad on my part. I really don't like wasting my missiles. If you can, they are very, very precious, especially when they are all that you have. It's kind of like if you are in a MiG-15 and you just spray 10 or 15 shells. That's a quarter of your ammunition gone for the 37. And it's kind of the same thing. Taking those weird speculative shots at like a kilometer and a half and wasting 10 bullets, it's not a good idea. And just the way that that happens, it's a very bad idea to also waste a missile on a bit of a speculative shot unless you are fairly certain that you're going to be getting it. And that's one of the things that you have to keep in mind when you are flying the uh, missile jets. You just have to treat them as precious resources. And that's basically what they are. So, 
Speaking of precious resources, this Jaguar is looking like he wants some precious resources, but then ducks down at the last minute, giving the AIM-9E some crappy closure, so I decide to not go for it, and then I turn my attention to this F-104. Now, I see targets at, at altitude like this, and I see them as prime targets for a good spanking via AIM-7D. And notice his distance here, he's only 3.5 kilometers in, which means that this missile could potentially make a nice connection, which it does, it makes a nice critical hit to the right wing. So, he's, he's got a hole in his right wing, and F-104G is likely going to go down without much of a fuss. The F-104G is basically just a rocket with very tiny stubby wings, and so the chance that he's damaged other components is very likely. Speaking of other components, we have another F-104 who has decided to go nice and slow, and I've managed to pick him up with an AIM-9E. F-4F, which again, we're in a full up tier, but... Um, you know, I'm I'm still like not convinced. It's not a it's not a full full up tier. I don't want to call it a full up tier, but uh, we are facing a couple of 10.7s. It still means that uh, I am in a bit of strife here. The F F 4F does have aim nine Js, and it is basically a more maneuverable F4E so I have to be really careful with this plane I have to get my distance and because he's gone for a 90 or 180 degree turn he's also like the MiG-21 PFM earlier bled all of his speed and has now left himself in a situation where he can basically be energy trapped by an F4C now that's kind of embarrassing but uh, it's one of those things that just it just happens in War Thunder it's just it's just the way the snail works so who's our next target I think it's going to be the F-104. I've managed to radar lock him, so I could potentially get an AIM-7 kill if I am playing my cards right. The F-1 here missiles the uh, F-4F early, and so I don't have that problem anymore. But the F-104G looks like he's playing some turning games here, so I don't really want to waste my last AIM-9E on this particular F-104. Maybe I will, maybe I'll find a better opportunity, and that's what I do. I roll over, look for some distance, and hopefully that is going to provide the... Uh, the, the opportunity here for another AIM-9E. So I release it, and just as I release it, the F1 eats all of my beans, which is very, very sad, leaving me with AIM-7Ds. Now the AIM-7Ds, like I said earlier, are not bad missiles. They're just really crappy at low altitude. And so I need to find myself a situation where my enemy is going to be at high altitude. There are two enemies left. One is the J7, and the other is a Jaguar. The Jaguar Probably is a Jaguar A and probably has Matra Magics, but uh, the J72 is closer and it looks like he is focused on AI. Now, I wouldn't focus on AI like this, I would probably be going for players, but this guy has decided to go for those particular planes and the Jaguar A has crashed, so he's the last guy left on the team and I have less than a minute of, or less, less than two minutes of fuel left. So, what am I going to do? My choices are to either die here or uh, go for the J7. Now, the J7 is pretty low altitude, I can't get a lock at all, and when I do, it's basically going to be too late. He's going to be turning, he's going to be dodging, he's going to be doing stuff, and I'm basically going to end up wasting all three missiles on this guy, and then say, bugger it, I'm going to try and return back to base. I am actually on zero fuel here, and I'm just gliding. I started gliding from about uh, two-thirds of the way of the map, and I was at about at an altitude of, uh, I think, maybe 3,000 meters, and an airspeed of about 800 kilometers when I ran out of fuel. This plane, for some goddamn reason, glides so well. And I don't know, I don't know what it is. I've just kept it at about, I think it's 400 kilometers an hour, maybe 450 kilometers an hour, and just gliding it across. And this plane, for some odd reason, manages to make it back. I'm kidding you not, it is a miracle that this thing got back at all. So I'm just gonna kinda let it play out a little bit while we have a bit of a discussion about top tier. Top tier, sort of leaves the F4C behind, and the F4C, being once the top dog, might become the top dog once more if we do something like battle rating decompression. Now, battle rating decompression is slated for uh, next patch. We are going to get an 11.0, and it has a, it sort of seems to be that the predictions or the things that I suggested are actually coming to reality in this next patch. So we are getting F5E and MiG-23M at 11.0, F4E, F4EJ, MiG-21BIS all at 11.0, MiG-21SMT at 10.7, MiG-21MF at 10.7. I think the J35F, uh, F, J35D is at 10.7 and the Mirages are all at 10.7. 
The FGR2, I believe, is going to 10 uh, 11.0 as well, and so is the FG1, and they're getting AIM-9Gs. Now, what could this mean for the F4C? It could mean that it becomes a little bit more competitive, because there's a little bit more breathing room here. The F4C is a little bit more akin to the F104G era type of... Uh, of, of jets it doesn't perform particularly well at top tier in fact it is an absolute struggle bus the moment you get someone even look at you you're practically dead because you have no countermeasures and your missiles are pretty crappy your performance in the air is also pretty crappy and this plane could do with a little bit of love now i don't know if this plane carried countermeasures in real life i don't know if it carried uh maybe better avionics or better missiles but if it did i would like to see the aim 9g in this particular plane and if you gave it the uh, aim, I think it's the aim, yeah, the aim seven E's. You could throw it back up to ten point seven without a shred of an issue. It would basically be an FGR two that is a little bit weaker and has a crappier radar and no countermeasures. So. I think that could be a real possibility. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know in the comments section what you think, because this particular match is over, and I've landed the plane safe. I, I don't know how I did it. I, I don't know, but. Uh, Chad Plane does as Chad Plane does. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.